Let's transform Photoshop into a measurement calculator so that you can take something like a picture of a room and figure out what different size pictures would look like on the wall and place them in that picture accurately sized. Or there's a product you want to buy online. It's a piece of furniture and they don't supply dimensions. But you can see a product within that photograph that you recognize. Well, if you can figure out the size of that product you recognize, then we can use that to figure out the size of the piece of furniture because we can use Photoshop as a measurement calculator. Let's get in it and see how. Let's start with a floor plan. I want to get this to be accurately sized because floor plans have numbers that tell you how big rooms are. Let's just see if Photoshop thinks this room is truly 12 feet 10 inches in this dimension. Well, to find out, let's make a selection. I'll use Photoshop's marquee tool and I will select that area. Just get the height. And then I'm going to open the info panel because the info panel will tell me the size of that selection. The only thing is with default settings, it's going to measure it in pixels. And we're thinking about feet here, so if we want to change the measurement system being used, we need to go to this icon because there's a little down pointing arrow that indicates there's a menu. Feet are not available, but we do have inches and therefore we'll use that. And you can see in height, it thinks that this is 2.04 inches high and that's not matching what it says on the plan. I want it to match. So this is 12 feet 10 inches is what we're supposed to have across the height that's there. Uh, we're going to have to think in inches because that's what Photoshop is limited to. And so there are 12 inches in a foot and 12 times 12 is 144. Feel free to use a calculator that should be 144. Then we add 10 inches. We want this to be 154 inches in height because that would be 12 feet 10 inches. 154 inches. Let's get it to be that. To do so, we're going to temporarily crop the image. So that's all we have is the area selected. Then I'm going to go in here to image size and we're going to use image size as a calculator. Now to do that, we need to turn off this checkbox called resample because we don't want to change the amount of information in the file. What we want to do, if we have that turned off, is use Photoshop as a calculator to figure out what number needs to go right here because that number determines how big Photoshop thinks the individual pixels that make up our picture are. And that's going to end up changing the numbers that are in the info panel. How are we going to figure out the right number to use? Well, all we're going to do is change these little pop-up menus here to inches and I'm going to type in for the height the actual number of inches we need. And I mentioned that before, it was 154 inches, 154. And as I typed in that number, did you notice resolution changed? It used to be at 300, but now it's at 3.974. So let's select that number. We can come up here to the edit menu and choose copy. And then let's apply that number, but let's not just do it to this small area. Let's instead do it to the entire document. So I just click cancel. And then I'll go up to the edit menu and choose undo crop. So we're back to our full uncropped image. And then let's return to image size. And all we're gonna do is turn off resample and select resolution and choose paste. Now we got the exact same number it calculated previously. If I click OK, now if I look in the info panel, look at how tall it thinks my selection is. It thinks it's 154 inches tall. That is 12 feet 10 inches. So now this plan is accurate when it comes to sizes, if I turn on the rulers or I look in the info panel. The other thing that I could do is let's say I want to look at what size rug would I want to put in this room or how big of a sofa. Well, if I go to my tools panel, let's come down here to the shape tool and I'm going to choose the rectangle tool. Usually with that tool, you can just click and drag to make a shape and we can do that just fine. Let's say you want a rug that is approximately filling this much of the space. Uh, I can draw out the size that I want and it's telling me right there before I even let go of the mouse button that's 144 inches wide and 118 inches tall and I might want to round those numbers off though so if I end up having that let's just click and let go 
And then over here in the right side of my screen in the properties panel, over there I see the width and I see the height. The only thing is right now that are linked. You see that little link symbol's turned on. That means if I change one, the other one's gonna change. I'm gonna turn off that link symbol and I'm just gonna kind of round off these numbers to realistic numbers. Because 144, that's a 12 foot area. If you're not used to doing this, I can come up to this little magnifying glass if I'm on a Mac and I can do basic math. I can do 12 times 12 and it tells me 144 because it's 12 inches and a foot 12 foot rug, 144. The other thing I could do is come down here and say 118 inches is what it thought that the height should be. And I could come in here and type in uh, 118 divided by 12 and say, well, that's a 9.8 foot rug uh, in your height. I don't know if they make a 9.8 foot rug. So what I might wanna do is go for either a 10 foot rug uh, or whatever other size I think it would be. Uh, so let's just say a 10 foot rug. Well, up here, 10 feet in inches would be, let's see, there's 12 inches in a foot, add a zero to make it 10 times that. And now I have, I think, a size of a rug that I might actually be able to buy. I'll press return or enter to actually get it to change the size of that. And then we have figured out the size of our rug. Then if we wanted to put in other objects in here, you just need to repeat the process. And what you can do when you're using that uh, shape tool, here I'll click away from that layer, and with the shape tool, instead of clicking and dragging, just click and let go without moving the mouse. Then this will come up, and you can type in an exact measurement. Let's say I have a sofa, and the depth of the sofa is I don't know, 24 inches. So I'm gonna type in 24, but right now you see that the measurement system here is measured in pixels. That's what the PX is. All I need to do is type in IN. And then I can hit tab to go to the height. And so if I'm gonna have 24 in one dimension, let's say the, the width of that uh, sofa, which I'm making sideways here, is, I don't know, 60 inches. Type in 60, type in IN, and click OK. I now have made a shape of that size. So I can look on websites and go shopping for sofas and pick out the furniture I want for that room and lay it out. That's just with a floor plan though. Let's move on and use the same idea for other kinds of images. Let's say someone wants to sell you this piece of furniture, and what you wanna know is how wide is the area across here because you want to know if a stereo component would fit there. Unfortunately, they're not willing to go and measure it. Maybe they don't have tape measure, whatever it is. We need to figure out how big that area is. And I know with just giving a photo, the numbers in Photoshop for size will not be accurate right now. I can come in here and select, let's say the entirety of the width of this uh, product. And I can see over here, it thinks it is 44.5 inches. And I know it's bigger than that. So how can I end up getting this to be more accurate in size? Well, first off, I noticed when I made that selection that this was not uh, straight. If you looked when I made the selection, it looked like the left side is lower than the right. Let's straighten that up. I'm gonna come over here to the crop tool, click and hold down on it. I'll find the perspective crop tool. With that tool, I can click on the four corners of a rectangle, and I'm gonna go for the four corners of that piece of furniture click on each one, and then I accidentally let go there, get those to line up. I don't wanna crop the actual image down to just this area though, so I'm gonna leave those corners set because they told Photoshop what angle those sides were at, and then I'm gonna grab the sides themselves, not the corners, and I can pull them out to say, I don't wanna actually crop the image much at all, and I can pull these out. Press return or enter when I'm done. Now this should be nice and straight. So if I make a selection once again, this should line up with it, where it doesn't feel like the left side is getting lower. But now I wanna know how big is that opening and I don't have any measurements, how can I do it? Well, I recognize something in this photograph. That right there is a Nintendo entertainment system. And I bet you if I go on a web browser and I come in here and type in Nintendo enter Entertainment center dimensions. 
And hopefully somebody has them written down. Look, there's a website called dimensions.com. And it even tells me right there the dimensions. But here we go. That thing should be 10.1 inches in width. Well, let's use that to get this file in Photoshop to be accurate. We're going to go through the same process. I'm just going to make a selection this time of the width of that object. I'm going to crop it so all I have is that. Then we're going to go to image size and use it as a calculator to figure out how big do the pixels that make up that need to be in order for Photoshop to make that 10.1 inches. So I turn resample off. I change this to inches and I type in, in this case, the width of 10.1. And it just calculated this number for me. So I select it and I copy. You can just type command C, uh, control C if you're on Windows. And then I don't actually need to change it. I can click cancel because I want to work on the entire picture. So I'll come up here and choose undo crop. And then I'll return to image size once again, ensuring that resample is turned off. And now I'm going to paste in that number here for resolution. Command V on a Mac, uh, Control V in Windows would paste. And then I click OK. Now if I look in my info panel, take a look at the width, 10.1 inches. So now we know that this picture is sized based on that object. The only thing is you got to be careful because it's only sized for that exact surface, that horizontal surface where the front of that game would be. If you look, this is an angle out here coming out. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger. So we're not going to be accurate if we're measuring way out here. We need to measure at the same depth within the photograph. So if I want to know how wide is this area, I now make a selection starting at about the same depth as that player, which would be approximately here. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag over until the bottom part of my selection is where that area would end. I'm just going to look at this edge. I can see it inside the cabinet and I can see it angled coming out. And I think it would be right about there. I think part of the door is covering it up. So right about there. And I can see that that's 16.9 inches. It's about 17 inches wide. So if I want to put a piece of stereo gear in there, I need to make sure it's less than 17 inches wide. Now, how can we deal with things like this with perspective? Well, let's work with a different picture to find out. In this picture, I recognize something. Uh, the lamp that's there. That's a famous piece of design. It's called a Nelson lamp. So let's go online and figure out the size of a Herman Miller Nelson lamp dimensions. And I bet you if I just view images, somebody's going to have a drawing. Yeah, right there. Okay, it looks like it's available in three sizes. Uh, I don't know what size we have, so I'm going to have to figure it out. Uh, if you compare the base width, those look the same. Uh, to the width of this, this looks really close to the width of that. This looks a bit wider, and that looks a lot wider. So let's go back to Photoshop, take a look at the width of this. If you want, we can make a selection on it, and then just drag it down to by the base to see how much wider it is. I'm thinking we got the medium version. And if that's true, I can go over here to my browser and say the medium version is what? 57.5 inches tall. So 57.5. Let's head back to Photoshop. Let's crop it so we have the height. I don't know if they used the little rubber pads on the bottom or not, but we're going to go for that. 57.5. We're going to crop this just like we did with the other images. We're going to head into image size just like before, making sure resample's turned off, and go for inches just like before, and 57.5. That just calculated for us that this is how big the pixels would need to be. So I'll copy that with Command C and hit Cancel. Now I want to work on the entire picture. So let's undo the cropping. And now let's apply it to the whole image. Image size, resamples off. And I'm just going to paste in resolution. Command V, Control V in Windows is paste. Click OK. And now we can confirm that that is 57.5 in general. Uh, in size. But that number is only accurate for the same distance um, that that object is at. If you look at the window that's just to the right of it, you can see the window getting smaller in perspective as it gets further away from that 
lamp. So how can I calculate now and apply that to the wall that's over here that's further away? Things further away would look smaller. Well, we can do it as long as we have an object that's getting smaller, like a wall or something else. So what I'm going to do is take this and look at where did we measure things. We measured out here at the, the tip of this. If I move over to the right and hit the wall, it's right about where this piece of trim is that's there. Well, I'm going to go for wherever the bottom of that piece of trim is. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag up until I see another object. I'm going to go all the way up here because the taller I go, the more accurate this will be. And I see that little horizontal of the window. I'm going to look at where would that intersect the area that I'm measuring. And I'm going to say the bottom edge of that metal would hit right here. So now I look in here and I see the size. It's 61.6. I'll just round it off, 61.6. What we need to do is get Photoshop to change the setting for this picture to get it to be 61.6, but to do it over here. So let's look at where that would be. It would be right here where this um, piece of trim comes over and hits there. Click. Then we come right back up to the bottom edge of where that metal thing is again, about there. And we're just going to go through the exact same process. Crop. Image size, no resample, and hopefully I remember it, 61.6. If I'm off, this will be off, but, uh, and it just calculated this number for me. So I copy it, hit cancel. And the only reason we're canceling is we want to do it when it's not cropped. So now I go back to image size, and I go back to resolution, paste it in, and click OK. And now that wall surface, because we looked at how tall was something at the same plane as the lamp, and we saw how much did that change in size when it went over here to where the wall was. And we had Photoshop uh, change things. So now what size picture is this? Well, let's go over here and make a selection and find out the approximate size. So that's about a 40 by 36 inch uh, picture. Well, there you have it. Now you can use Photoshop as a measurement calculator. If you want to learn a lot more about this kind of stuff and get deep into Photoshop, then check out my website at mastersacademy.com. See you next time.